What's up folks, my name is Justin Kana. You might have seen that there's two videos like this that went up on the channel. This is obviously the later version because the culinary version of this got priority that's linked up here. But I don't always get to talk about things outside of the chef space. I certainly cover them as the non-industry story on my podcast called The Emulsion. That's towards the end of the show where I like to get into things that are fascinating me outside of the chef restaurant cooking, you know, culinary landscape. I also realize that you might not be a content creator. You might not be into cameras and lenses and all the things that are linked up in my media kit that's down low in the description. For this video, I wanted to think about what are some things that I use in my everyday life, not related to work, that if I were to have these items not in my possession, would I pay to have them again? That's kind of the filter that I applied when curating this list. And so the first item is technically not mine. It's something that a friend of ours got Anna for her birthday this year, and it is a Chemex. Most of you know I have a pretty strong fondness for coffee. I really enjoy coffee. I'm currently drinking this. This is Stumptown's Evergreen Blend. This is a Guatemalan and an Ethiopian blended together, which I don't normally go for, but the flavor of this is just phenomenal, especially brewed with a Chemex. I don't have a fancy grinder yet. It's on my wish list, uh, probably for 2020. But to able to just brew once in the morning and have coffee that lasts me throughout the morning has been a game changer in my routine that I've really, really enjoyed. And just the the, the Again, talking about routine, there's been tons of people who talk about their routine of having pour over be part of their morning and how it's kind of therapeutic. You can't have, you can't multitask. You can't have your phone out and brew at the same time. I, I know you can, but like it's, it's, it's a nice experience that I'd like to have to start my day. I haven't a hundred percent tried using the metal filters with this before. I don't like the fact that there's just tons of paper that gets thrown out every single morning, but let me know if you've had good experiences with metal filters as opposed to paper ones. As we're talking, about drinking things, I also have a new water bottle. This is from a company called Purist. This is their one liter size bottle. I wanted something that was a little bit more professional to bring on trips or just into the office as opposed to my Nalgene, which kind of gave off like hiker vibes. This already has a little bit of wear and tear on it. It has some dents in it. I kind of like that look. This is of course 32 ounces. Look at that handle. Isn't that dope? It like clips up if you wanna do carabiner style or just to make the twisting off a little bit easier. It's the three quarter turn to make sure that you don't have to like turn it a million times to get to your hydration station. But yeah, hot things stay hot, cold things stay cold. It does its job. It's a water bottle, it's pretty simple. I just think the finish, the materials on it, the you know the way that it fits into my bag and accompanies my Peak Design Everyday Backpack is something I've really enjoyed using and I'm proud to carry this with me on a daily basis. Next up here, this isn't really a new piece of tech, but I've really been enjoying uh, using this. This is the Kindle from Amazon. Let's dig into my library a bit and talk about some books that I've been enjoying. I've really enjoyed uh, Story Driven by Bernadette Girois. Uh, I Will Teach You To Be Rich by Ramit Sethi. The Hard Thing About Hard Things by Ben Horowitz and Range by David Epstein are all currently either in process or I've finished in the past few weeks. I know so many of you are probably on the Kindle bandwagon. I don't have to sell you on this piece of tech, but for anybody who wants to either increase their reading capacity in 2020, or if you just don't want to lug around paper books anymore. I can't, like, the ability to highlight the fact that the battery lasts forever, you can whip this out and just, you know, when you're waiting on the train or waiting in line somewhere or... I always got this tip that you should never show up to a meeting empty handed. You should always, uh, if you are showing up to a coffee shop to meet someone, you should have either something else to work on or a book to keep yourself busy. So you get that text when they're five minutes late and it's like, hey, I gotta cancel for today or my thing's running late, I'm gonna be 20 minutes late. It's also a really great way to start that conversation when you're meeting someone, whether it's a date or an interview or just someone that you wanna catch up with. Oh, hey, I'm reading Range by this guy, David Epstein, and it was really interesting because he was just talking about this. I find that that can be a little bit more productive than binging YouTube videos or playing Candy Crush or Pokemon Go in my case. Another item that of course needs no selling, these are the most popular headphones in the world. These are the AirPods 2. I don't have the wireless charging case on mine though. And for some of you, the deal that's on Amazon right now on these specifically is kind of insane. And so I would highly recommend if you haven't tried AirPods or if you're an iOS user who feels that these would probably work with the way that your ears are, um, enough people have these, you can probably try them on from a friend of yours that might have these, but for taking calls, for listening to music and podcasts, these stay in my ears incredibly well. I sweat in these, I sit in the sauna with these. These are just constantly in the front left pocket of my pants. These have become part of my everyday carry and I couldn't imagine life without these. And so these have truly become an integral part of my life. 
Moving on, I've covered this on the podcast before, but there's something inside that I wanna chat through. This is Peak Design's tech pouch. As you can probably see, this opens origami style. It is just, this lives in my backpack. This switches bags with me. This has all the cables and adapters and chart. Like I keep my massive uh, power brick in here. I know that if I have this, I can execute on almost everything that I would need to execute on tech wise. This comes with me when I travel. I actually find that this fits more than what I need. So I have like band-aids in here and floss and like an extra USB stick if I run out of memory card space on a camera, God forbid. But what's inside of here is actually this. This is from Aki. This is a USB-C and USB power brick. And this is enough to power my MacBook Pro as well as charge all of my devices uh, in record time. I think some of us can often default into using whatever little brick came with the piece of tech that we're using. And sometimes there are some better alternatives where instead of carrying around like three little smaller ones or like one that has like, I don't know, two things that split an outlet into two or whatever. I just have this single one. It's smaller than the one that came with my MacBook Pro and it just, it fits into here perfectly. It has, it, it works with all the cords that I carry too. So I don't have to have like different little tiny micro bricks to go with different cables. I've never had any issue with power delivery on this. This charges my phone super fast. If I were to lose this or leave it on a plane or inside a hotel room, I would definitely Amazon Prime one back to myself right away. Also, most of you know I'm a Peak Design fanboy. So definitely Definitely check out their tech pouch if you haven't already. The sage green one is actually my preference. I don't know why I went with the black one, uh, but this is the one that I have and I really like it. All right, the next piece that I wanna talk about has been on camera this whole time. It's the Aura Ring. This lives on my finger. This has been on my person for the past few months. I talked a lot about this on Twitter when I initially got it. I keep it on the ring finger of my right hand because I'm getting married next year. I just don't like the feeling of ringers, rings, ringers. I just don't like the feeling of rings on any of my other fingers and this this has been run over by a car. I forgot this. Uh, this fell out of my pocket when I was leaving the gym one day. I got hooked on one of my keys and fell in the middle of the road and I went back and I found it the next day. It had been totally scratched up and beat up from get, just getting run over and ground into the gravel of the road. Still works great. So that was an incredible durability test. The battery life lasts incredibly long. It's like three to four days. So I have to charge this like once or twice a week, which is awesome. It gives me insights through the app that tells me about my readiness, my sleep, how my movement has been, it's an activity tracker that doesn't have a screen. And so with that in mind, I think that that makes it so that I can still stay productive. It gives me the little pings on my phone where it's like, hey, you've been sitting too long. You should probably stand up and stretch your legs. It gives me weekly reports so I can see how I've been across the week so I can track my behavior over time. And then it also like, oh man, I ate ramen a little bit too late last night right before I went to bed. And it's no wonder I woke up like six times before 2 a.m. I think of the routine behavior based tracking tech things like between Apple Watch or some of the other smart rings or things that you wear around your wrist. The way that Aura presents information through the app, the way that it is just super seamless for me to just wear and then track my behavior. And just the way that it's not huge and obtrusive, it just stays on my finger. I think that that makes it the one that I recommend, the one that I continue to use on a daily basis. And the last thing that I wanna chat through, I know I wasn't gonna keep this too media content creator focused, but these headphones are currently plugged into the camera right now. They're the ones that I use to mod monitor my audio, especially with the podcast. I got two pairs when I was building out my podcast kit with the support of the people on Patreon. These are super affordable studio monitor headphones. People from Rich Roll to Rick Rubin to Logic use these headphones for just the fact that they are just so clean and they're so uh, natural sounding. They don't have any boost in bass. They don't have any boost um, on the high end. They're just like incredibly transparent, in my opinion, comfortable wired headphones where they've got like the really long coiled cable. So you don't have to worry about that being in your way. I've played video games with these. I've done long interviews with these. I use these to sound check before I do any sort of media production. There was a point when I actually thought about getting the AirPod Pros and then using these for content creation and between between the noise canceling that was gonna be on these, I still have my Sonys that I like and use for traveling. But if you're thinking about getting a nice pair of headphones like for your home office, or if you're the type of person who has like a nice monitor and you just really like to watch movies uh, where you don't wanna disturb anyone else in your household, these are really, really great, e even just for geeking out on music. These also really help me out with editing to make sure that uh, even during the long sessions that I can stay comfortable and make sure that my audio sounds good for you folks. These, uh, these are great. How about a, that, would, that does not need to be that long. How about a bonus one? This is actually 
perfect with my thesis of speaking about if I lost this, I would order it again. This is an example of that. This is the Victorinox Spartan. It is no frills. It doesn't have a pair of frickin' pliers or Phillips head screwdrivers. It's just a knife. And the kicker for me, and the point that makes me want to get this, is the fact that it has a corkscrew without a bunch of other million different attachments. This one stays in my pocket. I had the one that it's it's linked up if you select a different colorway in the link that's down below. It was the white one with the black blade and yeah, it looked cool, but it was way too expensive for something that is just kind of like throw around uh, as a kind of pocket knife. This one stays in my pocket. I don't keep any little thing on the keychain. The other one I had had like a little cool string lanyard thing to it, which I might add to this or I might just take this off because it rattles around and it's kind of annoying. It's got the little tiny mini pair of tweezers in here. There's a toothpick on this, but for the most part, I just like the fact that uh, it's a simple, not too long knife that if, you know, I, I bring this and I accidentally have this at the airport with me and TS TSA takes it away, no big deal. It's really inexpensive. I can get another one just shipped to my house. At one point in my life, I did have a really nice Laguiole pocket knife that had that combo, that classic, really amazing combo of corkscrew and knife. This is what I really need. These are the only two things that I require in a pocket knife in my uh, everyday carry. And so to have this, I mean, it's got the, what are the other attachment, attachments it has? It has a bottle opener, classic EDC, it must have. This is actually a can opener, which is really great to have if you're really in a bind. There's a sharp blade to this one. Could be a great alternative, the one I covered in my culinary video. And then there's actually like a baby blade to this as well if you really uh, wanna have two separate sizes of knives for yourself. It is just so funny that as I was shooting this B-roll, this showed up at my door, cause like I said, I lost it. I went about a week or two and I never ended up finding it. So I considered it lost in my book and I went ahead and ordered another one. Case in point, back to the video. <laughs> we started off with such a good looking set with the natural light coming through the window, but it is obviously later in the day and it's sunset so fast now, isn't it crazy? But this is my rundown of things outside of the culinary industry that I would recommend for anybody to pick up. Things that I would purchase again if I left them behind or if they broke. I'm not gonna tell you that you need to go buy any of this stuff or that any of this gear is essential, but I think that like, I like to drink coffee every morning, so this is my preferred way to make coffee. I need to take phone calls. I'm more productive when I can use these to take phone calls. This lets me read more books throughout the year. So I really hope this was an opportunity to either turn you on to some really interesting stuff, or maybe like people that are really into gear are really hard to shop for. And so maybe there's something on this list that strikes your fancy that you can say, hey, I actually do know what I want to ask for for the holidays. Fun fact, my birthday is also two days before Christmas, and so this is usually the time of year where I'm like, hmm, what do I want to upgrade? I appreciate you folks letting me geek out on things that aren't just cooking related. I hope this brought you some value as per usual, but even more so this time of year, I am so thankful and grateful for you folks and for your attention. My name is Justin Kana, and I hope you have a good one.